being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The reason why you are persecuted as a child of God is that your faith has been tried. Chapter 3, verse 14. First Peter, chapter 3, verse 14. But, and if he suffer for righteousness' sake, remember, it's for righteousness' sake. If he suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Be not afraid of their terror. Be not afraid of their terror. Uh, that's one thing the devil wants to do. Uh, the devil wants you to be afraid. And the Lord said, you are not to be afraid. Number one, when you are, when you are going through persecution, understand the Lord has passed through the same thing. So number one, do not fear. Do not fear. Number two, do not fight. You know, the devil would like to point at something in your life and say, you too, you fought. You too, you got angry. You too, you retaliated. You too, you replied. Yes, they did bad. They did wrong. But you did wrong too. So, number one, do not fear. Number two, do not fight. Number three, do not fly or flee. Fly or flee. Now, you see, uh, I, I, you might have come across this before. Flight or fight. Whenever somebody attacks you, when, it, when I say attack, doesn't mean that they slap you. Maybe they attack you by insult, or they attack you by abuse, or they attack you by contradicting you, or they attack you by opposing you, or they attack you by, you know, just doing something and saying something that, uh, you know, that they are at you. They, it's like if you're afraid, you, you fight or you fly. Flight or fight. But don't do that. Now, but just remain calm and understand, you know, when you know it's coming, you know, if you, if, you know, if you didn't know it's coming, you'll be surprised. But when you know something is coming, Jesus said, you'll be persecuted. The persecution will come. The misunderstanding will come. The opposition will come. Therefore, it will not take you by surprise. Since you know it will come, get ready. Number one, do not fear. Number two, do not fight. Number three, do not fly, do not flee. Number, number four, do not faint. Do not faint. Don't allow that to depress you and to make you dejected and to make you discouraged. And then to be singing, I'm not alone, I'm not alone. Uh, Jesus is with me, I'm not alone. And you know, you know the reality. When you're saying I'm not alone, you're feeling you're alone. And then you say, it's not an easy road. It's not an easy road. This Christian life is not an easy road. What does it make it easy? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Carry your burden to the Lord and leave it there. And when you carry your burden to the Lord and leave it there, then you are free. And uh, you know, you are as free as the Lord who has set you free. And you know, when you are singing that kind of song every time, not an easy road, not an easy road, uh, you know, it, it's uh, it, sometimes in the valley, sometimes on the mountain. You know, those Negro spirituals, when, when you are singing those things every time, you make yourself more sad. But you will not fail. You say, Lord, here am I. Greater is he, is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All things work together for good. For those who are called of God, for those who are chosen by him, those who love God, they are called according to his purpose. And in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who has loved us. And I can do all things through Christ who loved me and he gave himself for me. You will look at the promises of God and which you will never leave, you will never forsake and no man shall be able to stand before you. A thousand shall fall at that side and ten thousand on the other side. Only with your eyes will you see the reward of, of the wicked. Because you set your love upon me, I will hear you. I will honor you. I will exalt you when you call upon me. I will hear with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Get on the positive side of life and get away from that self-pity. I'm not alone. Of course, you are not alone. I said you are not alone. Amen. And so number one, what's number one? Do not fear. What's number two? Do not fight. What's number three? Do not fly or flee. What's number four? Do not faint. And what's number five? Do not fall. 
Don't allow anything to push you down and make you fall. And you know, uh, you know what uh, persecution does? And what persecution does is that it lifts up your leg. Uh, look up here. And those uh, who are watching over satellites, I'm sure you are looking. You, know, you lift up one leg like this. If anybody comes and then pushes you because you are standing on one leg, uh, you know, the leg of self-pity, and you are raising the other leg, you are not stable. Anybody can push you down. But if you stood like this with your two feet, and you know somebody is coming, and you are ready, and he wants to push you, and then he pushes you, and then as he's pushing like this, this way, you are resisting, and he says, this one, this one is tough, okay, go your way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And so you will not fall, and you will not fall. Amen. And then, number six, do not forsake the Lord. Do not forsake the Lord. And because of the persecution, there are people that will just give it up. They, forsake, they forget their commitment to the Lord. Number seven, do not be frustrated. Do not be frustrated. Do not allow anything to ever frustrate you. It tells us in that passage, when persecution comes, where to stand. It says, let me read that verse 14 again. But, but and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason or of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Have been a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, and, or, and uh, as of evil doers, they may by uh, they may be ashamed uh, that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. We now come to point number three: the profit of persecuted children of God. The profit of persecuted children of God. I pray that all the persecution you go through will become profitable in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter five. In Matthew chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 12. Rejoice, rejoice, and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. The Lord is telling us that when persecution comes, instead of regretting that you became a Christian, and instead of renouncing the Lord because of the persecution, you actually rejoice. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 4, I'm reading to you from verse 14. It tells us in verse 14, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you for all things are for your sakes that the abundance of grace might through the through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of god for which cause we faint not because of the glory that is coming we faint not but though our outward man perish yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding uh, weight, ex a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Here it says, our light affliction, our light affliction. Uh, would you look up here for a moment as you look at what you have gone through since you became a Christian? I know when you're talking to your wife, you know, it's like, you know, a heavy body. My wife, uh, let, let's see, now let, let's, let's talk about history. Uh, since I became a Christian, I went through this, I went through this, I went through. I know when you're talking to your husband, my husband, before you married me, and, uh, you know, I became a Christian. I did that tell you before? Um, my, you know, I went through this, I went through this, I went through this. And when you are talking together like that, it looks like heavy, heavy thing you've gone through for the Lord. Great persecution. And I know when you are talking to your intimate friend, after you have, you know, you become a Christian, and now you are persecuted, and then you came out of it. Say, my friend, you know, I, did I tell you what I went through? I went through this, I went through this, I went through, and because a great, great problem. But I want you to you not know, forget that you've spoken to your wife or your husband or your, you know, or your friends. Now, let's come and, and let's talk to Paul the Apostle. And they say, Paul the Apostle, you became a Christian. And then you give your life to the Lord. And he says, yes. 
and I should have given my life to the Lord. Oh, and Paul the Apostle said, since you gave your life to the Lord, what did you go through? My daddy beat me when, because I became a Christian. Uh, what else? Uh, they said that they will not uh, buy clothes for me because of this and that. What else? They called me Holy Mary. What else? They, they said uh, Jesus, the prophet, pastor. They called me names. What else? Uh, there was one day they actually almost slapped me. Did they slap you? Did you? Slap? But they almost. Okay, Paul said, thank you very much. Let me tell you my own. I was imprisoned. They stoned me and left me for dead. They bound my hand and they bound my feet. Watch. And then all of them shouted and threw, threw dust on their head and said, Catch him, catch him, kill him. This man is not free to live. Uh, is that all, not only that, they tied me to a post and they gave me 39 lashes. I almost died. And you see all the marks in my body. And then when Paul has finished talking, then he says, What do you call your own persecution? Say, Our light affliction. Our light affliction. Everything you have gone through since you were born again, all the insults, all the persecution, all the abuse, all the denial, all the things who are counting as heavy and heavy, it's our light affliction. I thank God you have not got much more than you have got. If you have got much more than that, what should you have done? Stop saying that you are going through a lot. You are not going through anything. Now it's easy life. And we thank the Lord. The Lord already has borne the heavy part of the load. And what we are going through is just a light affliction. Verse 17, our light affliction, which is but for a moment, walketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, and the, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I pray that now we'll come to this new understanding. And then this load will be lighter in Jesus' name. Amen. And in fact, uh, the, the Lord is preparing us for something great and we'll experience it in Jesus' name. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Romans 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Everything in your life will work for good. Yeah. Now, when you go through persecution, what do you do? Number one, require or request. Require or request. That means you are praying. You are requiring for more grace, more understanding. You are requiring for more, you, you are requesting for more stability in your Christian life. That this persecution will not push you to say what you shouldn't say or to do what you shouldn't do. Number two, rely. Rely on the Lord. The Lord is by your side. Rely on the promises of God. When you are going through the persecution, number one, request or require. Number two, rely on the Lord. Number three, receive. Receive the grace of God. Because if you will trust the Lord, there is enough grace in, from the hand of the Lord to make you what you ought to be. Number four, rejoice. Rejoice. And, and you see, you cannot, you cannot do two things at the same time. You cannot smile and be angry at the same time. You cannot smile and be regretting at the same time. You cannot smile and be depressed at the same time. You cannot smile and then be so sorrowful, dejected as if you should kill yourself at the same time. Make an effort to smile. Just smile. And that depends on you. You can smile if you want to smile. And just remember something. What was the happiest day of your life? What was something that really turned you on and really made you happy? Just say, you know, you sit down. Let's say you're getting persecuted. And you see what the devil wants to do for you is to make you concentrate on that persecution. Concentrate on that injury. Concentrate on that pain. But if you just turn your mind away from that pain, and uh, this year, what, what has been the best day for me? What really happened that made me so happy that I belong to the Lord? And then you recall that scene. Then you might even want to close your eyes and see that picture in front of you. And see yourself as if you are seeing yourself on the screen of a, of a film show. And you see yourself in that happy mode. Identify with that happiness and rejoice. And look, overlook this present thing that is going on now. Number four, therefore rejoice. Number five, renew. Renew your consecration. Renew your commitment unto the Lord. Number six, reject any suggestion that is saying you are miserable. 
you're unfortunate, you're unlucky. Look at yourself. Reject all that kind of self-pity. Number seven, rest. Rest in the Lord, and the Lord will bring you through. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord is telling us tonight, there's nothing to be sorry about. There's nothing to be sorrowful about. You're a child of God. And even though there might be persecution, look away from that and look at things that should contribute to the joy of your life. Look at things that will contribute to you wanting to move forward, wanting to move on because of the great things the Lord has done, which He still promises to do as well in your own personal life. Remember, as a child of God, you are a peacemaker. As a child of God, you love peace. You rejoice when there is peace. You influence other people to be peaceful with one another as a child of God. And Jesus is our model, the model of the peacemaker. Make him your model. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto him. When there is conflict, confusion, contention, animosity, hatred, malice, disagreement anywhere, go in there and be like Jesus and be a peacemaker. Get involved in this ministry of peacemaking. Make it a lifestyle. Do it every time. Just have joy in reconciling people together and reconciling people with the Almighty God. Preaching to sinners, witnessing to them, calling them, Be ye reconciled unto God. Get involved in the ministry of peacemaking. Every action, let it influence others to love one another. Let it influence others to love to live. To love the Lord and to love the people of God. Let your message be a message of the peacemaker. We are brethren. We shouldn't fight. We are brethren. We shouldn't hate one another. We are brethren. We shouldn't make life inconvenient for anyone. The message of the peacemaker. Mediation. Mediation, mediation by the peacemaker. Be like Jonathan, reconciling Saul with David. Mediate. Let that be the motive of your speech. The motive of your interaction with people, mediation. At the mind of the peacemaker, let the peace of God that passes understanding rule in your heart. Establish peace in your own family. Be at peace with your wife. Be at peace with your husband. Be at peace with your children. Whatever you know you will say that will disturb the peace of the family, don't say it. Whatever you know you'll do that will disturb the peace of your children, the peace of your father, the peace of your mother, the peace of your husband, your wife, then don't say it. At the mind of the peacemaker. And the message of peacemakers. I will not cross to your side to come and harm you. 
you will not cross to my side to come and harm me. The message of the peacemaker. You think the best of other people. Do the best for other people. Encourage other people to be their best and to love to live. The message of the peacemaker. Avoid the mistakes in peacemaking. Don't allow any antichrist.